Hello, this is Reed Copsey, the president of SeaTech Development Corporation. Welcome to another episode of our tips and tricks for EBS and MVS. Today we're going to focus on adding a water table elevation display to a thin fence that we project to 2D. Now there's a, a couple tricks that we need to use. Along the way I'm going to also introduce you to a couple other modules that you may not be using. Now we're starting off with the application that's on the screen. This application will be available for download. In it we have Creek 3D Geology which has three surfaces. Those three surfaces are the ground surface, the top of the water table, and the bottom of an aquifer. So those three surfaces we then pass to Creek 3D where we're creaking in TCE data. This data has 42 different time states or data measurements that occurred at different times. And we are creating the last time which had the most data. As they progress through their measurements over time, they were adding additional sampling location. So we create that data and we're applying a small vertical exaggeration, only a factor of two. And then what we want to do is we're creating a fence diagram. Now the fence diagram that we're going to build or the cross section we're building was defined by a, a line that I drew previously and saved. You can see the line here. I'm going to disconnect thin fence. If I go to a top view, you can see the line passes through several of my borings in some of the regions where I have fairly high concentrations. I actually didn't pass through the hottest part of our plume but this is where we wanted the cross section. So that's our, that's our path. And we can pass that to thin fence and in a normal manner we can produce our, a 3D fence diagram. Passing through our borings. We have post samples to display all of our well locations. And if this was all I want to do, if I want to pass this to turn this into a two-dimensional fence diagram that's straightened out, I would only have to toggle this straight into 2D and also pass the same cross-section line to post samples and tell it the distance away from that line that I want to retain the wells that I want to display. So let's do that real quick, see where we would be. We'll straighten this to 2D. And we do that, notice that my fence cross section disappears. It does so because right now I have camera auto normalized set to none, which means that if the extents of my model change, I don't want my viewer to change. It stays put. If I pass this same line to post samples, post samples is now also going to um, straight into 2D because I turned this toggle on previously and if I tell it to renormalize re and if we go directly to um, a south view looking horizontally we have our 2D cross section. So this is our straightened cross section. It's retaining only the wells that pass within a very short distance. and we could be done at this point. But the challenge that we're trying to go over in this episode is what if I want to display on this 2D cross section the location of the water table? How do I get that out and how do I get it projected to 2D? So let's get there. So first let's go back to viewing our model in 3D. So I turn off the straight into 2D toggle here and we can uh, we can just turn it off and post samples also. And now when we reset our model and look at it in 3D, actually we're still only displaying the the wells that fall within the short distance of of our uh, of our line because the line's still connected. So I can bump this up to make it uh, say 500. And it'll, it'll reveal some of the wells, but not necessarily all of them. 
So we're back to close where we're, to where we were before. And uh, at this point, let's take a look at our other surfaces, our geologic surfaces that we have available. So if I connect these, let's connect a legend for them also. We have three surfaces available, our top surface, our bottom surface, and our water table surface. And it's the water table that we really are interested in. Notice that our fence is conformal to the top and bottom surface. We want to display a line corresponding to where the cross-section intersects the water table. So how do we get there? Well, first thing you need to understand is that there's only two modules in EVS and MVS that deal with projecting 3D models to 2D space and those are already in this application, thin fence and post samples. So the only way we're going to be able to, to do this uh, is if we use one of those two modules and the one we want to use is thin fence. Now another complication is that thin fence only deals with volumetric input and the input that I have is here is the water table surface which is not volumetric. But before we go to the next step one thing I want to show you is, first off, this picture is sort of ambiguous. I'm using a blue to red color scale to represent TCE concentrations, and I'm also using a blue to red color scale to represent elevations of this water table. So I've already edited the data map for another module that I want to show you, which is texture colors. Now let's disconnect geologic surface and disconnect it from the legend and this texture colors module is one that I've edited the data map so that the minimum color is uh, sort of this aqua color and the maximum is peachy color and it's a quick way to get discrete colors in your data map so I tell it how many I want to have go back to it. tell it how many I want to have here which is eight that matches the default labeling density in the legend and it just gives me these colored bands um, very quickly and easily. So I'm just now changing the display uh, so that we can show both sets of data, elevations and concentration, with uh, symbology or data maps that are not so ambiguous. It's clear that this bright blue to reds are concentration and these muted colors are elevations. So again, how do I create this cross-section and map it to 2D? And the trick is to use one of the modules over here in cell data called extrude. Now we use extrude because we've already said geologic surface is a surface and we need a volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to extrude by a constant a very small amount. So by a thousandth of a foot I'm going to extrude this surface. Now in the scale that I'm, I'm in, where the extent of my model is about 4,000 feet, that is a microscopic amount, but that's all it takes to turn this surface into a volume. So if I were to look at this, and I'm going to look at it again through texture colors, it looks the same. So I look at that on edge, it is so thin that you would not be able to tell that it's volumetric, but it is now. And because it is, I can then do a thin fence. So I grab another thin fence module I'm going to pass extrude to it and I'm going to use the same line to cut through it and I'm going to disconnect the uh, texture colors module right now and connect thin fence and it's so thin that you can't see it now it's there and and I could prove that if I go down here oops, and change this to be a bigger number. Let's make it uh, 10. And Now when I make it 10 you see this little strip appearing along the fence. Move, disconnect the other fence and here's the strip going along the path. And As I make it smaller it, it breaks up unless I zoom in on it. It's so thin 
and if I make it even stronger, smaller, 0.01, it disappears. It's there, it's, but it's so thin that it's less than a pixel. Now, to make it stand out, I can do something very simple. I'll just pass it into the external edges module. And now it's a line. It's actually two lines, a line at the top and a line at the bottom. But those two lines are on top of each other. And so you really don't see them. And now I can connect my other thin fence. And even though this line falls inside the fence, and so it's a little bit broken, it's more obvious. And we could fix that by setting its jitter level higher. Let's go ahead and set the jitter level of that external edge object to be higher. So we select it. And we leave that open because we close it later when we're done. We go to advanced settings and under object properties, type general. We just raise the jitter level by one. Now we can go back to our top object. And now that line stands out really well for us. So now if I go back and project all these thin fences to 2D. Let's do the first one. Do the second one. And go back to post samples and tell it to straighten the 2D and only give us borings within a couple feet. Here I have my cross section and our path. Um, right now it is external edges that is connected so if we want to see there's the colors and again I could pass external edges through texture colors and the application is getting a little crowded. Let's lift these up and arrange it here so we can see better. Connect it to the legend, connect texture colors to the viewer, and all of a sudden my line is white. What's happened? Well, unfortunately texture colors doesn't deal with lines as input. It only deals with surfaces and volumes. I knew this and I wanted you to run into this, so but I have one more trick on my sleeve. Um, we could show this line as a line, but alternatively there's another module that we can use that's pretty useful and instead of going straight to it I'll search for it and that's the tubes module and if I pass external edges to tubes and I tell it that I want a tube of a constant radius and let's make the radius um, 5 and we'll, oh excuse me radius, radius 5 and now if I pass this to texture colors, oh, that's way too big. Yeah, that's more like it. And let's connect the lines. That makes the tube small. It's still bigger than I want. And now I'm using the same colors we had before. And that may actually be a little smaller than I need bump up to three. But now that tube is of a constant size as opposed to a line drawn in pixels. So as I zoom on it, it gets bigger. If we turn on connect lines here, it will make our, our lines a bit smoother. As we zoom in on them, they'll look more continuous and nicer. And at this point, we're done. Uh, the one thing that we could do to this application, just to prove that it's in 2D space, is to add axes to it. And we still have a vertical exaggeration of two. So we want to connect that. And you can see that we're in the XZ plane. 
when we have no y depth, we're parallel to the axes, and our 2D cross sections always start at zero. So I thank you for taking the time, learning some of these new tricks. Big thing to remember that you can't do thin fence on a surface, but you can use it by extruding your surface first, turning it into a volume arbitrarily thin. And texture colors is another module that you may want to remember for your bag of tricks. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video.